and really creating the right political conditions for an outcome at Copenhagen which is high enough ambition to meet the scale of the problem. You're all politicians. Do you see that as a, as a, as a, a practical option? Uh, certainly, I am practical enough to realize that at Copenhagen, there is no way that we're going to focus uh, simply on our problems. Uh, there has to be, no doubt, there's got to be emissions trading. There's got to be whatever else, formulations of what to do with the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. But I think all we ask is... Uh, for humanity's sake, let's not forget about those communities which will be affected in, a, in, a, in totality. And I think it would be th the biggest challenge to humanity, the biggest challenge to all our international systems if we could not deal with this challenge. Yes, um, Copenhagen is actually a make or break. We must really make sure that the uh, developed nations must agree to bigger cuts and to uh, drastic uh, uh, targets and um, while the first commitment uh, they were not able to comply with that and therefore it would be wishful thinking for them to comply with the second commitment but we must go for that wishful thinking and actually pressure the uh, developed nations who are responsible for the consequences of climate change to actually uh, commit to that um, we, we can't uh, have it any other way. Do you think that's a practical option that's come from the British government there? A practical option of, 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 of greater pressure? It's not just a practical option, it's the only option. We must uh, make the developed countries who have been responsible for all this to answer for it and to help the least developed countries and the emerging economies. Uh, yes, uh, this voice is critical. And uh, it should go beyond Copenhagen into the individual uh, domestic politics uh, for the people generally to bring pressure to bear on their governments, especially in the rich parts of the world, to assume full responsibility in leading the globe, if not out of the threats of the climate change, at least uh, to enable the rest of the world including themselves, uh, find adaptive measures uh, to live with the changes that seem to be coming uh, without stop. It's very critical that uh, we right, have this pressure group. at the back, please. Someone has the microphone at the back. Who has the microphone at the back? Good. I've got it right here. Malini. Um, thank you very much. My name is Malini Mehra. I'm a climate campaigner from India. I've been very heartened by what I've heard this morning because I think that we need to hear more of your voices. You've been impressive, you've been articulate in providing your analysis of what the problem is, but equally what you're doing about it. And I think that the examples that we've heard this morning from Kiribati, from the Maldives, about how you are preparing very different strategies. In Kiribati, preparing a strategy for a phased migration. In the Maldives, preparing to stay put to make sure that your precious heritage and your people are enabled to live on their homeland. These voices need to be heard across the world. I think what you need, however, is to recognize that what you need is not just a few months to determine a political strategy, you need a media strategy. Because what those of us who are working as climate campaigners have found, 10 years ago, AOSIS was known and respected. Nowadays, the media doesn't even report about AOSIS. For those of you who don't know AOSIS, the Alliance of Small Island States, who have been arguing in the last few months to make sure that emissions are capped at 1.5 degrees by 2050, not 2 degrees, which most governments haven't even agreed to. Coming out of Bonn, we have derisory targets from Japan, Australia, Russia, the United States. I would suggest that you think about a media strategy. August is a time when the world's media has next to nothing to report. Make yourself a force to be reckoned with. Go out there and win the public relations battle. Go and have an encampment on the global media commons. Go to Congress in Washington, D.C. and speak to the Congress people who are light years behind where their population is on recognizing climate change as a risk as well as an opportunity. Come to my country. Come to New Delhi and speak to our politicians because this is not an issue of developed country versus developing countries. We're in it together. My country is shortly going to be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases. We have victims in our own neighborhood we're not recognizing. Go to Beijing, go to Tokyo, go to Moscow.
I have to say I'm not sure that August is ever a quiet month these days, whether you're a politician, an official in government who has a mobile phone, or a journalist. But there's a very important point here. You're essentially missing a trick. We have a nod of agreement from Kiribati. Do we all have agreement? In which case we can move on. This is basically what uh, I think somebody was making the point about the power play in all of this. And we, we're ignorant of these strategies. So please, you're very welcome. And all of you who are willing to come with us on this campaign. Yeah, but it's, I'm a member of the media, but it's about getting your position out there more publicly and more profoundly. How are you going to do it? That's the question. How to do it? I think we need a lot of assistance from campaigners like uh, that lady who, the lady who spoke. Malini uh, Mera. I have been getting interviews via the, the media. I, have, uh, I think I've got BBC. Uh, I've had uh, people here to see it today. Well, I'm not acting so, as an agent here. Yeah. I'm not acting as an agent here. <laughs> but uh, I think we need a lot more publicity. I think the, the lady is absolutely correct. A lot of people need to be educated. A lot of people truly need to be educated as to what is really happening. Senator Lagarde, you were 20 years doing the kind of job I normally do on television. Uh, what trick is being missed? Do you concede that this is actually something you should be engaging in much more sharply, particularly at this time? I'm a great believer, Nick, in the power of media. And uh, we thank you for that. But it is not enough to be heard in media to reverberate all over the world. We must make sure that um, the political leaders of the uh, developed nations must actually do something, not only in terms of legislation, but actual assistance uh, in terms of adaptation, direct tangible, implementable assistance for the developed nations which will soon lose their geography, their people, their culture, their livelihood. We must have concrete um, projects to relocate the 100,000 Kiribati and the people of, uh, of the Maldives who will lose uh, people and livelihood in, uh, in four years. So it is the responsibility of the developed nations to be able to absorb the so-called climate refugees in 40 years or less. But of course the media is very good. Uh, we cannot underestimate the power of media and we must do it uh, not just in the national, international media but in the local community media so that those who work in the agriculture sector, the fisher folks, would really understand the importance on what is their contribution towards adapting and mitigating in their own small way. John Kufour, are you missing a trick at the moment, not engaging the media and going up on Capitol Hill in the way you just suggested? I believe the media is already engaged because uh, I don't see my country as uh, insulated against the um, media spread around the globe in the ICT era. Uh, you press the button, you see what's happening in the United States, in Europe, in Asia, everywhere. What is important is for an organization such as the forum uh, to mount a campaign, global campaign, so the global audience, including the audience in our countries, get to hear what's happening to us from climate change and to enlist the people across the board to prevail on their governments to do what is right, uh, to bear their share of the responsibility in terms of the uh, slogan of common but differentiated responsibilities for every polity to bear its share, fair share of the responsibility of uh, fighting against uh, the change. Plenty more voices, please. Thank you, thank you, sir. I would like to commend the Global Humanitarian Could you just Forum. introduce yourself, please? Um, I am Joron Gay from IOM. Uh, I am Senegalese from origin, and uh, I work in IOM ten, uh, during 10 years, these 10 last years. I would like to raise the question of migration, and I'm, I am happy that many of the, the panelists already have um, uh, talked about that. Migration is a missing link in this uh, strategy, global strategy, to, to fight against climate change. And then uh, talking about uh, migration, I think that th this afternoon we will come back to that, but uh, um, answering to the President of Kiribati, I think that you are in the right track, sir, because um, um, having um, a mechanism that will allow you to, um, um, to have a process, a progressive process of resettling your people in a safe land, dry land, is, this is the future. This is the sustainable solution.